with that, and under the auspices of Governor Whitmer's Emergency Order 2020-15, allowing us to conduct meetings remotely, um, whatever, electronically. I'm going to call the meeting. We have the. I will call the meeting to order at uh, 7:54 p.m. Uh, the entire board is present. Thank you, everyone, for making this happen. Thank you, Mr. Friel, for your electronic wizardry. That will bring the meeting to order. Let's. Uh, I have an American flag in here. Let's begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. Find your nearest flag. <laughs> Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States, United States, States of America, America. and, and to the Republic for which it stands, stands. One, one nation, one nation under, under God, God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. For all. Okay, thank you. Um, because we're doing this electronically for the first time, we're going, I'm going to, I'm just going to take, make the initiative to move the agenda around a little bit. Uh, we, Wayne County was not prepared for the bridge presentation. We hope to have them on board tomorrow. I spoke with them this afternoon. Uh, they are attempting to answer all the questions that the residents questions we forwarded to them, uh, including another one I got today. So we're, we'll try to get them on tomorrow and we'll, as soon as we know it, available so push that out on the on the app and on the website and it'll be a probably a lot of a powerpoint presentation or some recorded presentation um with that i would also let's see just again rearranging tonight's agenda just a bit i'm going to move my presentation my state of the township to my report at the end um with all the current happenings much of it is unfortunately almost irrelevant we'll have to tailor it to the situation we're under at the moment. Uh, with that, um, um, what else? Let's see. I would like to request to add an agenda item, um, add the appointment of an interim fire marshal as action item number two. That is that is my motion to add Kevin Langley as the interim fire marshal as action item. I'm looking for support. Support. Okay, moved by the supervisor, seconded by Trustee Bletcher. Those in favor of adding that as an action item, please signify by saying aye. Action aye. 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 Are there any nays? Okay, I will, next one, I should do roll call votes, but with no nays offered, I'll assume that was all, it was all offered. Okay, uh, with that, bear with me, because we're gonna follow our agenda and uh, public comment and do we have the hand wave function or where we can? Brian, Friel, do we have the hand wave function available? Uh, you, sh you should. I'm looking for it on the sidebar. They would wave at you though, if they wanted I'm, to. I'm, look I'm looking for something that looks like a wave. So uh, let's see. Mr. Sorti, ah, oh, there's a hand. There's Linda Stanko. Let me unmute you, Linda. Yep. You are live. Okay. Public comment on tonight's agenda. Okay. Pardon me. You, you're live, and well, I was you just testing your hand thing. <laughs> oh, well, Linda, thank you. I have no comments. I'm on mute. I'm on back on mute. Brian. Okay. Uh, are there any other comments on tonight's uh, two agenda items? All right. Now that we know the hand wave works and seeing none, we'll move on to uh, the tonight's consent agenda. Mr. Treasurer. And I'm trying to unmute you, Ted, bear with me. You should be, your, your voice, you should be hot now. Okay, how's that? Now you're good. No, I'm good. All right. You're I'd good. Like to, I'd like to make a motion to approve consent agenda 19-097. It's pretty lengthy to alleviate a lot of action items, but it, it includes the trust, the minutes of the uh, trip board of trustees from the 9th of March. It includes the check register dated through March 20th, 2020. It includes the reappointment of township commission members uh, through the fiscal year of 2020-2021. It includes a member 
resignation from the Downtown Development, Development Authority. Uh, it includes the addition of a new member to the D Department of Public Services. Uh, it includes a adoption of the bylaws, Robert's Rules of Order, from 10th edition of Robert's Rules of Order, uh, newly revised in, in, in brief. Uh, it includes uh, moving April 27th, 2020 regular meeting to April 20th, 2020. Move April 27th to April 20th, 2020. Uh, approve the uh, process to distribute payments through April 9th, 2020. And uh, that's it. Okay, moved by the treasurer, looking for a second? Um, second. Uh, okay, I'll give a second to Clerk O'Connor. Um, those in favor of approving the consent agenda as public, aye. signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay, okay, that will be, again, I forgot the roll call vote again, but uh, it, there, that carried. And just with that, I'd like to uh, say thank you to Jennifer Debusset for her service <coughs> to the DDA. Uh, welcome Molly Reno aboard. And also welcome Lara Siraki. Uh, Mr. Buddy and I had a chance to meet with her uh, on our DPS commission. She will be a valued addition. She's a well-known uh, bridge engineer. So I think she's gonna be able to help us out. So welcome aboard to those of you. And again, Jennifer, thank you. And uh, good luck raising your little man. Uh, <laughs> Uh, action items, the first action item will be to appoint the commissioner committee chairs for 20 fiscal year 2020 through 21. And I was gonna ask Clerk O'Connor, who has a lovely reading voice, uh, if, she would, if she would read those into the, uh, into the record, please. Okay, <clears throat> as I'm losing that voice, <laughs> so um, bear with me, it's a, a long list. Um, the recommendation is to appoint John Schweikert as chairperson of the Planning Commission for the term April 1, 2020 to March 31st, 2021. To appoint Ron Moran as chairperson of the Brownfield Authority for the term of April 1, 2020 to March 31, 2021. I think since all the appointments are for that term, do you mind if I just read their names? I think you can read the names. Okay. To appoint William Kostick as chairperson of the Public Services Commission. To appoint Cliff St. Pierre as chairperson of the Greenways Open Space Committee. To appoint Jerry Bringard as chairperson of the Fire Commission. To appoint Anthony Kraus as chairperson of the Construction Board of Appeals. To appoint Paul Anderson as chairperson of the Police Commission to appoint Chad Nowak as chairperson of the Community Recreation Commission, to appoint Ron Moran as chairperson of the Airport Commerce Park Commission, to appoint Chad Nowak as chairperson for the Festival Commission, to appoint Ron Moran as chairperson of the Downtown Development Authority, to appoint Brian Medved as chairperson of the Island Beautification Committee, to appoint James Bittinger as chairperson of the Zoning Board of Appeals, to appoint Al Anderson as chairperson of the Airport Advisory Committee, to appoint Brian Pollock as chairperson of the Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Commission, to appoint Salem DeRainey as chairperson of the Board of Review, and finally to appoint Peter Kluinder as chairperson of the Municipal Ordinance Violations Bureau. Support. Okay, okay moved by the clerk, seconded by Treasurer Van Oz. Uh, any discussion among the board on these appointments? Okay, with that, uh, this time I will do a roll call vote, and uh, just the way your pictures line up, uh, Trustee Budney. Yay. Uh, Madam Clerk. Aye. Mr. Treasurer. Aye. Uh, Mr. Malvesto. Oh. Um, 
my fault once again. Let me find you on here and unmute you. You were just listed as trustee. This is going to be a little. No, trustee for this should. You will not unmute. All right, Tom, uh, Mr. Melvesto. Aye. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mr. Bletcher. Aye. Okay, Nelson, same thing. I've got to get you unmuted. Aye. <laughs> You're and Supervisor, aye. That motion carries. And thanks to all, all those of you who are on these commissions committees. Um, you're the ones doing the heavy lifting. With that, I would like to move with action item number two recently added. Uh, I move that the Grosse Township Board of Trustees hereby appoints on an interim basin basis Kevin Langley as fire marshal for the Township of Grosse effective 1 April 2020. Support. Uh, who, who is the Support. second? Jim Budney. Okay, I'll give it to Mr. Budney. Uh, thank you. Okay, the background of this, uh, with the retirement of Chief Murdoch, motion of Russ Bode, the position of Chief and Fire Marshal is vacant. The crush of emergency responsibilities and the increased demands upon our fire rescue department due to the pandemic has left the department critically understaffed. Uh, again, the normal selection process would begin with a vote of the membership of the Gross Hill Volunteer Firefighters Association, then through the fire commission to the board for final approval. We're adjusting to the mandate to stay home and avoid contact. This pro process would cause an unnecessary delay. Therefore requesting the board appoint Kevin Langley as interim fire marshal till the appointment is either approved or rescinded by the appropriate agencies that we just mentioned. And fiscal impact uh, salary to begin, to begin at $50,000 on an annual basis, uh, future raises based on performance. The source of funding will be the fire operating fund in the fiscal year 2020-21 budget. Uh, any discussion among the board? Okay, with none offered, again, I will go one more roll call vote to bring Kevin Langley on again as interim fire marshal pending approval with the Grosse Hill Firefighters Association and the Gross, then the Grosse Hill Fire Commission and then on to the board for final approval as a permanent position. Uh, Mr. Budney. Aye. Uh, Madam Clerk? Aye. Mr. Treasurer? Aye. Mr. Melvesto? Aye. Uh, Mr. Butcher? Aye. Mr. Nelson? Aye. Okay, Supervisor Aye carries. Uh, you for taking us on in such short notice, everyone. It's just a little bit hectic times here. That concludes tonight's action items. We'll move on to our normal agenda, the clerk's report. Madam Clerk. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Gentlemen, nice to see you all on the screen. Um, as we've been dragged kicking and screaming into the 21st century uh, on Zoom of all things. Um, I just have two things today. Um, as you know, I work in a healthcare clinic um, as far as I think it's important to point out that there is a huge sector of our healthcare system that is working on fighting the coronavirus, but there are many primary care physicians and specialists who are still telecommuting to work, visiting their patients by telephone, um, checking in, um, doing refills. And so I want to let anybody know out there, if you're listening, and you have health concerns that are not related to the coronavirus, reach out to your primary care physician. They're, they're on their phones and they're there to help you get through this because all of our other conditions haven't gone away just because of this situation. And one of the things we've been talking a lot about in our clinic are some ways to stay healthy. And I just wanna take a minute to share those. We want you to stay home as much as you can, stay active as often as you can, walk, garden, do your spring cleaning, purge your records, stay in touch, reach out to each other, work remotely, socialize remotely, stay calm, avoid taking in too much bad news, and stay strong. Thank you. 
Thank you, Madam Clerk. That uh, that pretty much echoes all, <clears throat> all the advice I've gotten from a number of sources. Um, and I won't elaborate on that at this point. Let me move on to the Treasurer's report. Mr. Treasurer. Uh, thank you, Brian. Uh, first of all, I just want to thank Annette and Ann and Karen. Uh, they're coming in on a limited basis, uh, getting the checks done and keeping the township active financially. We're doing our deposits. Everything's being done through the drop box. And I want to thank them. My second thank you goes to our amazing recreation director. Uh, this young lady has stepped up. I see her delivering Meals on Wheels herself. Uh, she's on Facebook a lot, uh, encouraging the seniors uh, to call and doing shopping for the seniors. You know, oftentimes we hire people, it's a hit and miss proposition, but this young lady's a winner. Uh, and I just want to tip my hat to her. I think she's done a great job and I have nothing further. Thank, thank you, Mr. Treasurer. I think we all feel the same way. She has been very busy. Uh, okay, with that, we'll move on to trustee liaison reports and uh, I'm just gonna go across my screen. I don't know how your screen is laid out. I'll start out with Mr. Budney. Uh, thank you, Brian. Uh, uh, nothing much to say. Uh, all, all of our, my commissions, of course, are uh, kind of laying low at this point. Uh, Derek uh, has been coming in. He's uh, uh, keeping things moving. Uh, I would just encourage everybody uh, to uh, watch the uh, tape session on the bridge when it, whenever it comes up. Mm -hmm. And uh, stay healthy and stay safe. Thanks, Jim. Uh, Mr. Malvesto. Uh, no, I have nothing to report this evening. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, Mr. Bletcher. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. The police department is pleased to report that we are still handling emergency calls. There are some strict protocols about identifying individuals when you go to a home for emergency services, what kind of health they're in, and what precautions that need to be taken. Um, Chief Warnick and Chief Deputy, Warnick, Chief Lieutenant Hart, Deputy Chief Hart and Lieutenant Allen have uh, gone to extraordinary lengths to protect the citizens and the personnel that are working in the police department so that we're all safe and continue to render services. We are encouraged by the fact that it appears that the numbers have fallen down significantly. People say, hey, Carl, Carl, Carl. You are you're you're getting you're generating the feedback from your mic somehow. I've muted you for the for a moment. Let's see if we can. Because it's almost your report's almost unintelligible. I'm going to unmute you, and I think Dale's going to come in there and see what's why why we're getting all the reverberation. We just put Mr. Nelson in timeout. Comes in another room. We think okay. that took care of it. Okay. Um, okay, Carl, continue, please. <laughs> All right, sorry about that. Uh, at the conclusion of our last police commission meeting, uh, Deputy Chief Harden was asked how the coronavirus was impacting the department and services. He indicated that uh, he has done a tremendous amount of research on that. He has a lot of materials and sources that he can work with. He did indicate that there would be new protocols such as uh, inquiry of citizens when you go to their house for an emergency uh, um, call response for health care and uh, that seems to be going very well I have not received reports of anybody that is ill yet with the virus so that appears to be working open space we are looking at relocating the Meridian Trail so that it can be removed from the um, there is a special vernal swamp that is there and uh, we want to move the trail out of that and DPAC we're meeting uh, in electronic format informally using the crew app for the group contact and that's working out very well. But most importantly, a very large thank you to police and fire. Uh, I understand that their calls are down just an awful lot so that people don't have to go to hospitals, but these men and ladies, gentlemen and ladies are out there every day answering the calls, coming in contact. And I just wanna say that we thank them for the work that they do. They're the first responders and they're doing a terrific job still makes calls and runs to the hospital, but this has just been a very difficult time and they are doing very, very well. And just a big thank you for that. Okay. That concludes my thank report. Thank you, Mr. Bletcher. Um, along those lines, and I'm glad that the, our dispatchers are doing the first inquiries, 
we don't want to dispatch an ambulance and essentially expose three members of our fire rescue department to the virus if a family member can transport the person to the hospital. So again, we're trying to just, we're, we don't want to run out. We, we only have so many guys. We don't, we can't afford to run out. Uh, Mr. Nelson. I have two things uh, tonight. First of all, thank you uh, very much, uh, Ted, for your very wonderful comments about Kim doing a great job as a rec director. Uh, secondly, uh, Island Fest has been postponed, not canceled, postponed. So make sure you get postponed your head, not canceled. And I also want to thank Brian Friel for setting us all up tonight. Uh, for most of us, uh, we aren't real tech savvy. And Brian Friel, you saved the day. Thank you. That's all. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Nelson. Uh, let's see. Um, town, township, of, let's see, attorney, I'm looking for... I don't have anything to report. Okay, nothing from the attorney. Uh, I'm the township manager, Mr. Ream. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Um, I'd like to let everyone know that although Township Hall is closed to the public, we are still open. And what I mean by that is we have staff rotating in and out. We're working remotely as well. We're checking our voicemails, working from our computers. And we're trying to address as many residents' concerns as we can electronically. And um, surprisingly, it, it's, it's keeping us all pretty darn busy, but it's, it, it, it's I guess, it's a necessity. Um, in many ways, um, it's working very well. Um, the remote work is simply because we are limiting the number of staff in the building at any given moment. We have had some requests from residents about um, their delay in paychecks and water bills and things like that. And our answer is we're going to um, evaluate every request um, individually. So we don't have a blanket policy that we're going to do one thing or another. But obviously, um, at times like this, we uh, will definitely be uh, addressing the matter as, as deemed necessary. Um, for information purposes, definitely. Grozeal.com, check the website. We do push notifications, the social media outlets, um, especially Recreation Facebook. Um, I know that's where Recreation Director O'Farrell is giving all the updates on what's going on with um, her, her um, services. So all of that is available. Please do just that. Go to those media outlets, go to the website, and communicate with us via phone and email. We will do everything we can to address your concern anytime. So um, definitely want to pass on a giant thank you to um, the management team and the entire staff. Um, I think we're making it work pretty well. And at this point, the uh, um, you know, no way is it business as usual, but we are getting business done. So just wanted to assure the board that as well as the residents. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Mr. Ream. Uh, supervisor report, as I said, I was my, normally at this meeting is when I read the annual report and I uh, reflected back on it and I was just, it was with, it was just crushing all the, all the optimism, all the accomplishments, all of a sudden had, had lost a lot of their significance, but I will, there are a couple things I will reflect back on and what we've come through over the years. Uh, this is my 12th year as your supervisor. I'm still working as hard as I can along with the rest of the board, I'm sure, to make this the best place to live in Michigan. Um, things we've gotten done, let's see, providing services. The major public works project was the Park Lane water main replacement. Teamwork between our, our DPS, our DPS commission, the consultants at Range, Wayne County, and numerous contractors all contributed. Uh, we, as you recall, up in that area on the north side of the north end of the township, we have we're having water main breaks every day. We once we replaced the pressure uh, reducing valve, those stopped. We didn't replace it; we fixed it. And uh, and then we're replacing this water main with the new high density polyethylene. I'm just we, we should all be real proud of this. We're really building infrastructure for this community that's going to last long after. Uh, we're gone, our kids are gone, and our grandkids are gone. It's, it's good stuff. And I'll, I'll, I'll be real proud of it. 
The uh, DPS, our DPS was awarded the American Public Works Association Award for that project based on its size and complexity. Um, when we lost that portion, and this was important a few months ago, when that portion of the loading dock in Detroit collapsed into the river and the news people went nuts reporting all the radiation, except that there wasn't any radiation. And it was, to me, it was very disappointing how factually inaccurate the news reporting was that they didn't bother to do any fact checking. And when I challenged one of the TV anchors who was very proud of her work on this, that they, they doubled down and they came back and said it was confirmed radioactive. Well, I checked with Brian Kelly, my contact at EPA, and he was there on scene after the collapse. Uh, they found no radiation. Uh, MD Eagle, M MD Eagle now, the former DEQ found no no contamination, no radiation. The FBI was there. They found no contamination. I'm urging everyone when you read these stories or see these television exposés that uh, catch your breath, give me a call, give one of your uh, uh, trustees a call and we'll we promise we can be held accountable. The girl on TV can't. So again, uh, Great Lakes Water Authority checked the water coming in at their intakes uh, both upstream and downstream from their intakes, found no radionuclides, no uh, contamination. We had our water checked uh, at a couple of locations at the, uh, at the water main onto the island and then a tap, and we found no radionuclides and no contamination. So I want to just say if this comes up again after we get through this uh, little emergency, your water is safe and your DPS commission and your DPS uh, directors are always working to make it safe. We were sa named Michigan Safest City for 2019. Uh, please, let's never get tired of that. We've gotten it several years, actually either first or second every year for the last 10 or 11. Let's never take that for granted. Uh, we've got a great police force. We've got a great fire rescue crew working together it's uh, and, and a community that just doesn't tolerate the lie. They just don't look away from it. So uh, for everyone out there, let's keep that up. Let's keep it that way. Uh, as we're all aware, uh, Chief Murdoch retired. Uh, Fire Marshal Beaudry's taking over. And boy, his timing it was either really good or really bad, depending on how you look at it, because he's really had a chance to shine. But he's been, he's tired. He's been working very hard. And uh, I'm, I'm just so thankful to the board for approving the interim uh, uh, appointment of, of Kevin Langley. I know they're, they're both going to be working real hard. Uh, as you're aware, Angela Sokokas has left the DDA. We may be calling on her to help a little bit with the potential small business administrations. Uh, manager Riem is going to contact her, see if we can pick her brain on how to make it easy for the business on my home street to access these SBA loans and grants. There's a, as we saw, there's billions of dollars being cut loose and it's gonna be necessary to sustain some of these small businesses so that when this is lifted, when we get back to normal, they'll be able to jump right back to normal. Um, the demolition remediation at McLeod has been put on hold. Uh, the community advisory group, again, is on hold. We can't. We're not doing any close order meetings. So we'll, as, as those get back up to speed, uh, we'll, we'll advise you as soon as possible. Um, again, on hold, my, in my looking forward section, what I'm looking forward to now is, uh, you know, we have the sandbags in the fill. We can, uh, those of you with, with water and encroachment on your property, we do have sandbags. We have fill outside of hangar two. If you're going to come along with a friend, make sure it's somebody you've been in close quarters with because, again, we're trying to maintain the separation. Uh, same procedures. You can get the bags at the public safety building. I want you to take no more than 20 at a time. 20 bags will take you two hours to fill. That will probably fulfill your exercise requirement for the day. Uh, come back as many times as you need. And if we need more fill, we will get more fill. The uh, visitor center at the International Wildlife Refuge, that opening has been put on hold. It was scheduled for May 9th. That is on hold. It's on. It's postponed. They are going to get it open, and uh, Susan will tell me when. Uh, the tennis center, the former drill hall, will be opening that soon. Again, when? 
to be determined. Looking forward to what that has to offer for the township. Uh, as, as Mr. Nelson pointed out, Kim is very busy right now. Let's let the dust settle. We'll get to that. And tomorrow, hopefully, we'll have the, uh, the news on the bridge repairs. Roads, finances are still good. We, uh, we finished with a balanced budget. We've got a balanced budget going into next year. Our bond rating is still double A, investment grade, little risk. I'm proud of that. So other things I wanted to work into my report, uh, I'll just give you my, my recap on my introduction to pandemics. And like I said, I thought everything was running smoothly. We, the, the budgeting was going well, bridge repairs coming, Island Fest was, was coming up, and then this virus sneaks in. And initially, I was a little, I was skeptical because we'd had SARS and we had the Zika and West Nile, it goes on, but this, as predicted, has proved to be a good deal more deadly. And I'll reflect back, nobody here fortunately remembers the Spanish flu unless you've done some research on it. It killed almost 700,000 people in the United States. And uh, the, the, the reflections on that, people seem normal, healthy in the morning, they were dead by nightfall. I'm getting reports that uh, people, people are feeling onset of flu symptoms in the morning, they're on a ventilator later that same day. Uh, Madam Clerk O'Connor can probably advise us more on the, the, the just the crush going on at, 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 at uh, Beaumont South Shore. So take this seriously. And again, when, we, when you, you call in, if you're calling for help, if you have serious flu symptoms, you're going to be at, you're, we're going to want you to report to the hospital and they're going to ask you, do you have shortness of breath? Can you hold your breath for 10 seconds without difficulty? Do you have a dr consistent dry cough? If you're coughing up something, that's not a dry cough. You have a hacking, burning, dry cough. That's a symptom. On a temperature, the uh, CDC said 100.4 Fahrenheit. Um, World Health said 99.4. The average human temperature is somewhere in the 97.5, 97.6 range. It's not the 98.6 we are all taught since grade school. It's just, it's come down. So therefore a temperature of 99 plus degrees is significant. Over a hundred is very significant. So take your temperature regularly. Uh, my wife and I were on vacation in Florida as we got notified of this emergency. We cut our vacation short, flew back and wanted to get back before all the airline schedules unraveled. And we just got on the leading edge of it. We got back uh, within the same day we had uh, rescheduled too, but not at the same time. I knew we were probably exposed to about 150 other people on that airplane. We've been taking our temperatures twice a day, every day, consistent so far. It's extremely important to me because uh, my son and daughter-in-law have a baby due on or about the 18th of April. And that, to me, that's critically important we, because we're going to be doing some babysitting as this goes on. And we're all hoping and praying for a, just another big, healthy baby boy. Baby boy. It's going to be baby boy, at least that's what we were promised, we're told. Uh, I love them both. So what have I been doing in my spare time other than taking my own temperature and, and, and painting the bedroom and cleaning out uh, all the old files and burning a lot of stuff and shredding stuff and, and staying active indoors and limiting my contact. I've been on the phone, conference calls with Wayne County Public Health, Wayne County Emergency Management, uh, numerous calls with, with Debbie Dingle. She, uh, she'll do an open, open town hall, and then she does for the uh, 12th district leadership. I've got to give my shout out to Wayne County Emergency Management. There was some discussion not that long ago. You know, what does Wayne County bring to us other than the courts and the deputies? Um, and and we, get a, we send a lot of taxes to them. And this is outside the tax scope to some extent, but the Wayne County Emergency Management has been well ahead of this and it's they're they're the ones courting through fema to get the deliveries to the places obviously we were a little behind on that because the stockpiles weren't there but they've been i've been talking to them every day and they're getting the stuff out we're getting it to our people they're getting it to the other uh, emergency responders throughout wayne county the 43 communities outside of detroit and every day in the morning, I get the situation report. I send it to Mr. Friel, who has it up online and posted within seconds. 
And then later in the day, I get the, uh, I just call it the casualty report. Those numbers are going up. They're going up frighteningly. This is serious. And those numbers are going to continue to go up. So please continue to follow the, the rules, the safety suggestions we're giving you. Let's keep this at bay. Um, anyway, all of these agencies, the reason they couldn't get the presentation on the bridge, they're all working remotely. They are not going to the office. My phone call with conference call with Miss Watts was she was in her car. Uh, most of the rest were at home and uh, where they should be. Uh, but they're still getting the work done, as are we, as is your board. So what I learned from Mrs. Dingle's call this morning is uh, some communities are enforcing the emergency order to stay at home, to, to not congregate. They're ticketing businesses that are open that shouldn't be open. They're ticketing construction crews that aren't essential. Hopefully we don't have to do that here. I don't want to do that here. But come on, people. This is, this is a chance to save your life to end this pandemic sooner, as soon as possible. So let's just keep our distance, keep washing our hands. Um, other stuff, okay, so please, let's absorb the, the separation. Get outside, as, as Claire from said, get outside. We have great bike paths, they're big, let's use them. The wildlife refuge is open, it's a great place to get out, get separated and, and enjoy nature. But again, do, the term we used was a so social distancing. It should be physical distancing, but socially, let's stay in touch with our family, with our friends, with our neighbors. Uh, if, your neighbor, if you have a neighbor that haven't seen, maybe in distress, check on them. Let's look after each other and we'll all get through this. Uh, some other things, I mentioned uh, the, uh, the sandbags, we have them in fill. So you can get started on that. Again, observing separation. There, I did promise, or Dale promised on the agenda that I would discuss the deer cull. Yes, we had a deer cull. Uh, I'll try to answer some of the questions that I've seen. You know, why didn't we ask for 300 permits? How many deer do we have? Answer the first, second question. We don't know. We were unable to get a count because, as I've said previously, we need snow cover on the ground and no leaves in the trees, and those two did not coincide. We didn't get much snow this winter. So we couldn't get a helo overhead to get an accurate count. Without an accurate count, the DNR is going to be hesitant to give us an, an, an inordinately, inordinately large number of permits. They gave us our normal 100. We filled those. We asked for more. They gave us 10 more. We filled those. 110 permits, 110 deer taken. Again, this is, there's a lot of volunteer work that goes into this. It's hard, hard work. Um, I do want, we will want to get a count. There was some bad information out there that because every doe drops two fawns, that means we're, if we have 300 deer, that means we're going to have an extra 600 deer. It doesn't work that way. If we, I'm just going to give rough numbers. If we have a hundred deer, 50 roughly are does, each are going to drop two fawns. The uh, survival rate is to 20 to 30% a year. So of those, of those a hundred fawns that are dropped, 20 or 30 will will make it to reproductive age. You're not going to be overwhelmed. Again, we don't have a number, but the numbers are not going to go up exponentially. And those numbers are from the DNR. I'm, I'm not making them up. But we'll stay on top of this. And like again, a lot of volunteer effort. We're going to stay on top of it. And if we can get a count, whatever I learn, I'll, I'll pass on to you. Um, and one more thing before I open it up to uh, public comment. So while you're at home, it's census time. I filled out my census. It took me exactly five minutes from start to finish. Uh, the website is, is online. And uh, it only took me, like I said, it took me five minutes, but there's only two in my household. If you have more household members, it's going to take a few more, more minutes, but it shouldn't take you any more than 10. So let's get it done. Gross Hill had an exceptionally high response rate in the 2010 census. Uh, Mr. Evans expects us to have an exceptionally high response rate in this census, so please take a few moments. I mean, you're going to be home anyway, so go ahead and spend a few minutes and get your census done online. What 